tell me all about Jocelyn. Jocelyn is amazing. Doctors told us she would never walk or talk, and she has walked. She jibber jabbers, not talking yet, but we're working on it. Um, she loves playing in water. She loves bubbles. Are you ready for some bubbles? All right, here we go. Look at all these bubbles. Tell me about Jocelyn's love of bubbles. She loves chasing them. She loves popping them. See, she's getting so excited. She just... <laughs> when did she first show that type of emotion? Um, she has been laughing since she was a baby baby. Getting super excited about things. Oh my goodness, you popped my bubble! <laughs> that was silly. <laughs> that was a funny joke you played. Ready for another big one? Whoa! That bubble popped right away. Jocelyn has hearing loss. She has cortical visual impairment. She has autism and cerebral palsy caused by a virus that I caught while I was pregnant. Unfortunately, the virus passed to Jocelyn and it affected her neurologically, but she is capable of anything. How old is Jocelyn? She is seven years old. Just turned seven a few days ago. Happy late birthday. Did you celebrate? Yeah, we celebrated. I. We went to a water park and she got a tower cup. A, wow, I can't even talk. A cup, a tower of cups. She loves cups, as you can tell. So she, we made her a tower of almost 300 cups and she knocked it down and had a blast. <laughs> that sounds like a lot of fun. She likes different things, so. You got to kind of learn what Jocelyn likes. A birthday party is not going to be fun for her, but playing in a water park or places like with bounce houses, she loves. What is it like to be Jocelyn's dad? Uh, it's an adventure, but I don't know. It's pretty rewarding, really. I never believed in love at first sight until I had my first son. You know, so I don't know. Just something about her happiness and her smile. Just, I don't know. It just melts my heart, so... Tell me about that love at first sight. What was it like when you saw her for the first time? You know, I never believed in that. It was just a saying you hear all the time, but it hit me like a ton of bricks when I first hit her. I mean, it just kind of floored me on the inside, you know? I mean, to be a part of this special little girl's life, I don't know, it was just something that kind of took me by surprise. I wasn't expecting that, the flood of emotions like that. Ooh. Yeah, you talking? Ooh. She loves her monkey. It's her favorite, favorite thing ever. She loves kissing him. <laughs> Tell me about the virus that she got that caused all of these diagnoses. It is 80% of the world has it and you usually catch it when you are like school age kid. Kids shred the virus through sharing drinks with people. So it could be as little as you drunk after your other child and that could give you CMV. And the chances of it passing to your baby while you're pregnant are low. But if it does, it can cause all these disabilities that Jocelyn has. What's the name of the virus? Cytomegalovirus, short CMV for short. And hers was congenital. So that add that little extra C, congenital CMV. <laughs> How would you describe Jocelyn's diagnosis to someone who's never heard of it? It's tough because it's kind of it ranges from so many different things I would probably start by talking about autism maybe because there's so many similarities between autism and what her virus I mean, I think I don't necessarily know that she's autistic But her virus puts so many similarities that put her in the autistic range so I would probably first describe it through autism because people see autism kids with autism on TV or shows or They'll know somebody with autism, but nobody knows anybody with CMV, or they don't know they know somebody with CMV. Is every single one of her diagnoses, including the autism, tied to CMV? Yes, CMV has caused all of those things. 
a lot of overlap. Like autism and CMV have a lot of the same characteristics. So it's most kids with CMV also have autism. Also have hearing problems and vision problems. So because they exhibit the similar behaviors as a kid who's autistic, they get the diagnosis so they can get the supports. Right, exactly. Bubbles, bubbles, bubbles. Bubbles, bubbles, bubbles. Bubbles are so cool. CME is a virus that many people have. It's just when a mother catches it for the first time while she's pregnant with a child, that's when it can have detrimental impact. My body doesn't know how to fight it for her. So it passes to her and I'm not doing anything to fight it for her because my body has not learned how to fight it yet. So like if you were to catch it as an adult, you probably wouldn't even know. It would be like cold symptoms. And that's it. Like, you wouldn't even know. But for a newborn baby who is just building an immune system, it can cause, like I said earlier, my friend lost a child to CMV. It's a very serious thing. It's something that if they don't catch early on, they can't do anything for it. What's the most important thing for others to know about Jocelyn? Hmm. The most important thing to know is that all she wants is some love. She just wants to be some love and attention and that's all it takes. It doesn't, she's not gonna, she's not, I don't know how to explain it. Uh, you know, she's not soft. She wants to be roughhoused with and played with just like anybody else. Should I put the bubbles away? Goodbye, bubbles. We'll see you later, bubbles. I can't believe she's not protesting that. Does she usually protest them? Oh yeah. Ah. Oh, spoke too soon. It's gonna happen. She'll end up protesting. I would be like amazed if she didn't protest uh, that. Uh, She's trying to tell you to get them. <laughs> More bubbles? Uh, but I don't want to blow the bubble. Okay, uh, fine. I'll blow. She's a boss. I'll blow some bubbles since you love bubbles. Bubbles are fun. She gets everything across to me and we don't have too much problems with it. I don't know. We just... It was pretty easy. We just figured it out. I don't know. It's hard to explain. It's kind of like when I was blowing the bubbles and stopped and put it down. She pushed me back towards the bubbles. Yeah, she was teaching you like, hey, you better do that. <laughs> but yeah, a lot of it, she's really teaching me how to interact with her more than I'm, I'm trying to figure it out. You know, she's showing me how to interact with her. So. Is it important to follow her lead and when she gives you that communication to listen fully? Yes. Yeah, it really is important to follow that lead. And I try to... You know, when we go out in public and we go to the doctor's office and everything, she actually follows my lead really well. You know, if I want to grab her hand and walk over there right now, she's in her house and she wants to play right here, she's going to fight me a little bit, you know. But if we're outside walking or if we're in a place she's not familiar with or we're at the doctor's office, she follows my lead rather well. So I'm, she makes me pretty proud of her a lot of times. I mean, it's little things. It's kind of silly that get so proud over something so small but you know these are all things that we were told she'd never do what type of thing does she learn in school what are they teaching her they are trying to teach her to communicate with pictures so right now she pulls you to things she wants or brings them to you and they want her to point to a picture of something so that's right now that's how they're trying to get her to communicate she has a Deaf and hard of hearing teacher there. She has a physical therapist, occupational therapist, speech therapist. So she's got a big team of people helping her and it has helped a lot. She didn't walk until she was three. So hopefully the talking is next. She just got her hearing aids about six months ago. So we just got to the point where she will tolerate wearing them. Do you hope your friends at work or wherever ask you about her milestones and her progress? Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I was probably the most ridiculous guy. I'd run around work showing pictures. Oh, look, look what she did today, look what she did today. I'm awful about it. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a girl's daddy as much as she's a daddy's girl, I guess. So, I don't know. I'll let them know. <laughs> they probably don't have to ask. I talk about her so much. 
How much of the day do you need to interact with Jocelyn? Does she need constant supervision and stimulation? Yes, you have to be around her at all times. Mm -hmm. What happens if you're not? Um, she will put herself in the toilet. Did happened you say before. In? in. Yes, she. One day it got real quiet, and I knew immediately there was some reason it was super super quiet. And I go into the bathroom, somebody had left the door open, and she was sitting on the toilet facing the wall, and she had her head in between her legs in the toilet. Water is water to her. She loves water. Goodbye, Bubbles. Yeah. Do you want more Bubbles? Uh. I can do more Bubbles. Thank you for telling me more Bubbles. So what do you do when, um, I'm just playing right now, of course, but what if you're actually done with the bubbles? Um, I hide them, she'll throw a foot for about 10 minutes and then eventually she'll get over it. Over it, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that bubble splattered everywhere. <laughs> I can't believe we just saw that one, it was gigantic. <laughs> Does she grind her teeth like that a lot? She does. It's a fixation. She's got to be doing something with her mouth, something with her hands. She grinds a lot. Whoa, did you see that? That was so big. Uh, uh, uh. You want another big one? So when she does that, is that her way of saying more? Or is that it's just her? It's kind of hard to tell sometimes. Sometimes it's her, she's excited, and then sometimes it's because she's upset. But mm -hmm. right then, it was because she's excited. You kind of got to look at her facial expression and the noise. But Co Context, you, know. you can tell with the context. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, that bubble popped. She's letting you in her space really well right now. Does she not always do that? No. She pushes people away when they get in her space sometimes. Thank you for letting me in your space. I'm having a lot of fun. Whoa! Whoa, whoa, whoa! These are some of the biggest bubbles ever known to man! Whoa! How do you and Jocelyn bond? Um, she likes being squeezed. So I'll sit in a chair and she'll come run up to me and I'll squeeze her and then she'll run away and come back and have me squeeze her. I kiss her. She loves kisses. She smiled really big when you kissed mm -hmm. her. I love being able to kiss her and her smile. I love that she gives me hugs every now and then now. There was a point in time I couldn't even hold her. She didn't even want me holding her. So it's, I love it. And I eat it up. <laughs> oh. You're actually teaching me things to do with her. Like you doing that that close to her is going to make her better about letting people in her space. Yeah, exactly. And I'm doing it in a way so it's something she enjoys. So it's kind of her making the decision, but she's also getting comfortable <laughs> having somebody in her bubble. <laughs> no <Right>? pun, yeah. <laughs> no pun intended. It's funny. Whoa, that was the biggest one of the day. There is an antiviral, Valgancyclovir, and it can stop the virus from damaging the brain. But because CMB isn't tested for, they haven't put that much money into testing this medication. So, so far, it's only approved for the first six months of life. If they don't get it in the first six months, they don't get it at all. And Did she get it? She got it, yes. She got the medicine because she was diagnosed three days after birth, so. What would have happened if she didn't get the medicine? Um, the 
virus would have damaged her brain more than it did. I am in a CMV group with a bunch of other CMV moms and Jocelyn is pretty mild compared to a lot of the kids in that group. Like I almost feel guilty sharing milestones and stuff of Jocelyn because the other kids in that group are so severely affected. How was she diagnosed three days after her birth? She, when she was born, she had low platelets and she had to be taken to the NICU where a random blood donor saved her life. She received blood transfusions constantly for that, those few days and they finally tested her for CMV because she was testing negative for everything else. She failed her hearing test, which was, is a sign of CMV as well, and the low platelets and the hydrocephalus. It's all these things combined that made them test her. And you're doing such an amazing thing, spreading awareness. You can't prevent something you don't know about. So people have not heard about CMV. Mo I'd say none of her doctors had knew, knew about it. They gave me Google paperwork on the virus because they just, there's nothing known about it. And um, I forgot what I was even saying. Well, what can people do if they just wanna make sure that their baby's safe? Wash your hands, don't share drinks with people. Um, be careful when you're changing diapers because it's through fluids. It could be through sweat, urine, drinking after somebody. So you just gotta be super careful with hygiene while you're pregnant.